Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we are doing another unit roster preview and guide for RIS version 0.6. And today, as you can see, we are doing the Achaean League. Yes, very excited to bring the Achaean League, guys. Very, very famous league from all of Greece from that time period. So yeah, get excited. It's going to be fun. And as you can see, a massive unit roster. Very, very varied as well. So we'll be going through that all in detail in just a second. But first things first, guys, we have just passed 2,270 subs. So if you haven't subscribed already, that would be fantastic. And thank you very much for doing so. On the way to 2,300, of course. So please stick that subscribe button if you haven't already. Right, without further ado, guys, let's talk about this unit roster a little bit in general first before we go into all the fun stuff. So as you can see, the amount of reformed troops in this roster is massive, and it is a really big roster as well, as you can see. And uh, you just don't start with a huge amount of troops, but there's a very specific reason for this, and that is the history of this nation. And as you can see, loads of reformed troops, very colourful, looking absolutely stunning as usual. But let's talk about the history of this roster and why the non-reformed troops, there's so many less than there are post-reform. So let's talk about that for one second. So this historical note is from Mausolos once again, so thank you to him for sending this to us, guys, so that we know why the roster is as it is. The Achaean League came about through diplomacy, and it grew itself through diplomacy, not warfare. So its early roster, as we've seen already, lacks good units and a lot of units indeed. Only the Hoplites and the Slingers of the area were kind of famous, uh, and Polybius records how his personal heroes, Aretos of Sicyon and Philopoimen, the most famous leaders of the Achaean League at the end of the 3rd and the beginning of the 2nd century BC, then reformed the army because of this. They introduced the Macedonian Phalanx and Armoured Thoracitae, as well as elite units like the Chalcospedes of Megalopolis and the Epilectoi of Argos, whilst also, of course, reforming the cavalry, giving them shields and all that sort of thing. The Achaean League, therefore, then became a hugely important power in Greece, and it secured its power through a long-lasting alliance with the new found kids on the block, Rome, having earlier been supported first by the Ptolemies and then the Antigonids. In the second century, however, almost the whole Peloponnese and a few cities outside it were members of the League. But in the 140s, the Achaeans did something that a lot of people have done and not lived to tell the tale, that is, turning against Rome, which then led to the famous sack of Corinth. However, the new province in Greece was then called Achaea, and Polybius himself became the first unofficial governor of the region, thus enabling him to preserve a lot of the traditions that Achaea had held for centuries. Um, and then, of course, some of these units, guys, that you see in this roster continued then in service and later fought alongside legions in Gaul. So... Really, really famous history and interesting history for the Achaean League. So let's get into the roster then. We know why the roster exists as it does. So let's get into it. And of course, we're going to start with the missile boyos. The Greek archers, we've seen these guys many times before. Always looking good. Always protecting themselves from the sun. Very sensible. Very nice. Uh, but the morale of four, defense of nine, and the missile attack of six. Pretty standard, we've seen them many times before. I would take them over the Slingers, but here we actually have Achaean Slingers, which are slightly different. They've actually got a defense of 12, which is a lot better than most of the Greek Slingers. A morale of 5, which is better than most Slingers as well. And a melee attack of 5, a missile attack of 5, and a um, missile range of 140 with more ammo than the Archers. However... And like I've said before, it's very uh, situational whether you're going to take the Slingers or the Archers. It completely uh, is up to you. But I would probably still take the Archers just because of that extra, uh, extra one missile attack here. Even though the range on the Slingers is slightly better. If you're more defensive minded, you'd probably want to take the Slingers. Uh, but either way, it doesn't really matter too much. They're both going to do decent damage, especially after they've got a bit 
of experience. Never try and get them into melee, uh, needless to say. <laughs> so, next to them, we have the Acontistae. The uh, Javi Boyos, and they are just the standard Acontistae that we've seen many times before. 12 defense, 6 morale, 6 melee attack, and 9 missile attack. So... If you like Javi boys, get your hands on some of these. They'll do some really decent damage. Now, on to the Achaean Peltas. Now, these guys are pre-reform. So, we have a look at these guys. 26 defense, 14 morale, 11 melee attack, 11 missile attack with 7 Javis. I know it says 6, but you've got to remember that's because those two officers in the unit, if we come and have a look. The game simply counts them as well, so it thinks that everyone has six, but they actually have seven Javis. But yeah, 26 defense is really fantastic. 14 morale, 11 melee attack, and 11 missile attack. 11 missile attack is obscene for a Peltast unit. That's really, really nice indeed, guys. And we saw last game the battle with us uh, versus the uh, Achaean, uh, Aetolian League, should I say. Um, these guys actually held off Epilectoi, or an equivalent, the equivalent Aetolian version, the Aetolian Peltas, held off Epilectoi for a long time. So these guys are not too bad in melee, and that 14 morale really helps them out sticking in the fight for as long as possible. So when you use these guys in the right situation in melee, maybe holding off an elite unit before you can get your elite units there to flank them, they can really do some good damage in melee and really hold the line. So, honestly, guys, these guys are quite good. And, you know, I've spoken many times that I don't like Javi, uh, Javi Infantry or Javi Cavalry. But these guys kind of changing my mind at the minute. They are quite good. I, I do like them, indeed, as a unit. So, nice one to have there as well. Now, let's have a look at our post-reform uh, missile boyos. We have... The uh, Neocretan, Aphebes, and Aphebe, Aphebes, Aphebes, there we are, and we can see 7 morale, 9 melee attack, but 9 missile attack, a really strong amount of missile attack, with a range of 160 and ammo of 24, with a total defense of 22, of which 9 is defense against missiles, and they just look stunning, don't they? They look fantastic. So we've seen these Neocretans quite a few times, guys. Really good unit. Going to do a lot of damage in uh, in long, drawn-out battles. The thing with archers and missile units in general, guys, is you can either have a battle where they might get 10 kills per unit, or you can have a battle where they get 150. It just depends how drawn-out the battle is and how you use them. Always try and get them round the flanks to fire. You know, it's not always practical with the amount of micro you have to do to do that and if you've watched my Seleucid campaign I don't generally do that but um, you know using them to the best of their abilities they will do a lot more damage than the other archers and slinger options but again when you get access to them it's good to start changing out your archers for these guys because they're going to do a lot more damage over time and they're going to be a lot better against um, and against missile fire themselves so they're going to die a lot less. Obviously, try not to get these guys into melee. Not the greatest when it comes to melee still, even though they are an elite archer unit. Now, let's have a look at our starting infantry, guys. And we're going to start with quite an interesting unit, the Foreign Theroperoi. Now, we can see they have their Thurios shields here. Looking very nice indeed. But you can see they don't have much armor. They've got these large spears, however, which I really like the look of. Look at them. Really cool quite big if i'm not mistaken they're a different design to yeah you can see the different design on the spears there very different design to a lot of the other spears that you see generally with the hoplites and theroperoi units it's a lot fatter and a lot bigger very nice indeed quote that please someone clip that oh god um foreign theroperoi yes looking good uh 28 defense Morale of 13, melee attack of 10, and a missile attack of 13 with two Javis to fire into the enemy. Only six defense against missiles, guys. So you really don't want to get these guys in uh, missile fire because they will just die. There's, there's not many units, missile units that are not going to be killing these guys very quickly. So try to avoid missile fire for these guys, especially javelins. They will just shred these guys to absolute pieces they are pretty much your bargain basement level of infantry they are not a good infantry unit guys so 
I wouldn't really want to use these unless you absolutely have to because of monetary constraints, all that sort of thing. They do look really cool nonetheless, and those spears are awesome. I really do like the look of those spears. But like I say, it's your worst infantry unit, guys. So, you know, only use these if you really have to. If not, use them to garrison cities, I would say. Uh, and they'll do plenty fine a job on a wall. But yeah, apart from that, probably not what you want to get. Instead, you want to probably go for the Achaean Hoplites, which we can see looking very cool indeed. I absolutely love the look of these guys. A lot of blues on this, and we've got some more unique shield designs again, looking very nice. Ah, very cool indeed. And we can see the Achaean League uh, emblems on show as well. And we've got um, your typical crack addict there as well. Very nice design. I do like that one. At 36 defense with 13 morale and 13 melee attack. So pretty much the standard hoplites. Uh, that is the standard I've seen. That is the most common sort of uh, stats that we see with the hoplites through all the units. 36 defense and a 13 morale and around a 12, 13 melee attack. So, yeah, standard Hoppate unit. Going to do well early game. Hold the line for you while you try and flank the enemy. But later on, you're going to want to phase these guys out as much as possible. Unless, you know, they've got gold experience or something like that. But solid early game unit nonetheless. Now, let's have a look at our Achaean Epileptoi. And these guys look mean. They look great, don't they? They look absolutely stunning. As usual, we get to see all the little details when we come in close. The, the little details that, you know, you don't even need to have in the game. Because most people are going to be looking at the game from this far away. <laughs> but just the amount of detail that has gone into these units, I say it every time, is just obscene. It is fantastic. It is glorious if we're going to use a uh, phrase that I say all the time. <laughs> but yeah, these guys are in fact glorious. They are a very, very good unit early game. And even mid to late game, you're going to be smashing enemies with these guys. 40 defense, which is fantastic. Really good. Uh, only 11 of which is against, uh, against um, should I say, uh, against missiles. And they've only got 7 armor. So they're not that well armored. Um, so... 29 defense skill. If you're ever fighting someone that is armor piercing, like the uh, Galatians uh, and those, not the Galatians, sorry, the um, Thracians, a lot of armor piercing units with the Thracians, these guys are the ones you're going to want to uh, combat them because they don't have much armor and they have 29 defense skill. So they're going to do really well against armor piercing units. And in general, they're going to do really well anyway. 18 morale, fantastic. Melee attack of 14, which is really good for a spearman unit. And two Javis of 16 missile attack that are going to shred through the enemy. 16 missile attack on those Javis, guys. And look at these shields. They look really cool indeed. Have a look at them. Really, really nice. Absolutely love these guys. They look absolutely stunning. Very nice. And a very, very, very good early game unit. If you can get your hands on these guys, you are going to be wanting to use them all throughout the game. Not even uh, just early game. All throughout the game because they're that good. A very nice unit indeed. Right, let's have a look at our post-reform units then, guys. And we're going to start with the Achaean Theroporoi Late. So, these are the Late Theroporoi. And they are pretty much the standard Theroporoi that everyone else sort of gets at the start of the game. 34 defense. A bit extra morale than the Hoplites. 14 morale, but one less melee attack at 12. With uh, two Javis of 14 missile attack. You cannot underestimate that. That is two Javis that are going to be shredding the enemy. And yeah, they, they look fantastic again, don't they? Very nice. The big Thurios shields ready to go as well. Very cool indeed. I like the helms and the capes and the plumes. Always, always, guys. Uh, but yeah, very, very uh, just standard mid-tier unit, you know. When you get to late game, guys, I probably wouldn't be recru uh, re uh, recruiting these guys unless I absolutely have to because I don't have the money. You know, I'd probably be recruiting, you know, the Epilectoi or some of the other units that we're going to cover in a second obviously these guys are probably going to be able to be recruited in a lot lower level of town so that is where their advantage lies in their ability to be recruited in a lot more places so yeah they're going to be fine but yeah when you get to late game once you've got your reforms they might not stand up too well because they are pretty much just a standard theroporoi unit so let's have a look 
at the Achaean Thorakitai. And here we are. Here are the boys. Here are the heavy boys. Look at them. Here come the heavies. Here they are. Very nice indeed. I love the swords that they have. Fantastic. Big Thurios shields as well. And we've got capage and plumage on show. So we're getting up towards a more elite unit. But we can see 35 defense, which is decent. Of which, you know, 15 is uh, against missile. So a decent amount of missile defense as well. 20 defense skill, which is fine. 16 morale, which is really good. But a melee attack of 12 and a missile attack of 15 with two javis. They're still not quite as good as your epilectoi over here, as you can see. Um, but they are a decent mid-tier, you know, late, uh, late heavy infantry unit nonetheless. And the swords always offer some sort of advantage against spears, I've always found. I don't know if someone can confirm that. I believe that might not be exactly true. Um, but the swords always seem to work quite well. I think the spears obviously work well against cavalry uh, and swords against infantry. So, yeah, a decent unit nonetheless. Decent mid-tier sort of unit. Going to do well throughout the game. Now let's have a look at our Argive Epilectoi. And these guys are very nice as well. Look at these. They look absolutely beautiful. Or should I say glorious? They do look glorious, don't they? And we have shields. Uh, sorry, we have capes and we have uh, plumage going on. And these guys have the Aspis shields, the circular shields. I like that design. Very nice indeed. And yeah, some more new designs on the shields. As you can see, lots of cool designs on these shields overall and they look great from the back look at that fantastic very nice indeed but let's compare them to the other epilectoi we have access to so if we have a look at the other epilectoi you can see that Achaean and epilectoi are actually a little bit better so these guys again um a little bit worse than the Achaean and epilectoi they've got a little less morale three less morale uh, and one less melee attack but yeah pretty much the same defense just more defense with the shield. So these guys are going to do better against missiles than the Achaean uh, Epilectoi, as you can see. Yeah, they're going to do a little bit better against missiles than the Achaean Epilectoi, but a little less better uh, in melee against, say, uh, armor-piercing units. But very nice unit indeed. They're going to be solid all the way through the game, like we've talked about. 15 morale and 40 defense is nothing to sniff at, as well as 13 melee attack, which is decent uh, attack for a unit uh, that is, you know, a spear-wielding unit. Yeah, really good attack for that. Well, it's a decent attack. Not not really good, but it's decent. Uh, and it's pretty much the standard we see through the mod of 13 attack for spear-wielding units. So, yeah, a uh, an okay unit. Gonna, gonna do well. They're obviously gonna be cheaper than these Epilectoi. So, if you want something slightly different, then you can go for these Argive Epilectoi. Slightly different unit. Gonna do a different amount of damage. But, yeah. Cool. Now on to our phalangites. So we have the Peltophoroi, the uh, Achaean Epilectoi phalangites, and we have the Megalopolitan Chalcospedes. So let's have a look at our Achaean Peltophoroi. And these guys look really good from the front because the different colors on the shields are really cool. Really cool indeed. Really, really cool. I love the different looks on the shields there. And we have lots of uh, capage going on behind as well. These guys, you know... He's hiding. He's camping in Call of Duty 4. That's what he's doing right now. Uh, but yeah, inside the rock. If, if anyone remembers that, comment that down below. Back in the old days of COD, you could get into rocks and be an absolute scumbag and get <laughs> 25 kills and zero deaths. But anyway, uh, I did, never did that, of course. Never, never, never. But anyway, let's talk about this. 15 morale, 34 defense, and a 17 melee attack with an old attack of 8. Obviously... You don't want to get these guys out of phalanx because they're rubbish. Uh, that's the same with all phalanx units, though. I'm not just talking about these guys. Yeah, you want them in phalanx the whole time, if possible. They've got a 13 defense against missiles, which is decent nonetheless, and 21 defense skill, which is fine. These guys are just a little bit worse than what your general mid-tier phalanx unit is. So when we compare that to, say, these megalopolitan chalker speeders, you can see... The Chalka Speeders are just a little bit better. And those Chalka Speeders here are pretty much the standard, 
the standard stats for what we see for a uh, phalanx unit. So these guys are actually a slightly worse phalanx unit than most phalanx units in the game. So if you get to this point, you probably want to go for the Megalopolitan Chalcospedes. If not, you can still go for these guys because... You know, Phalanx units are still very good. They're still very good, guys. So don't worry that they're slightly slightly worse than most of the Phalanx units. If you're fighting Hoplites or anything like that with these guys, they're still going to shred. They're still going to do really well. It's just when you come up against, say, the Epilectoi Phalangites or an Agama or anything like that, these guys are going to get shredded. So, yeah, just stay wary of that and try and get these guys into fighting, uh, you know, Hoplites, Theroperoi, all that sort of thing. Now, well, let's talk about the Chalcospedes over here. And we've got the bronze shields over there. And you can see the shining, the glinting of the sun on these guys. It looks so good, doesn't it? If we look down this line, look how beautiful this is. It is fantastic. Looking very nice indeed. And these guys, of course, look brilliant once again. Very cool. And I love these bronze shields, you know. You can always tell the Chalcospedes because they have those bronze shields. But here we are. The Chalcospedes, the Mega. Uh, Megalopolitan Chalcospedes, should I say. And these guys are pretty much, like we've just said, are pretty much the standard um, hopl uh, not hopl phalangite unit with a total defense of 36, 14 against missiles, so decent amount against missiles, 22 defense skill, 16 morale, and 18 melee attack, which is around standard for most Chalcospedes units or most base level phalangite units. So yeah, a decent phalangite unit nonetheless. Gonna do well all through the game, of course. Especially against, you know, enemies that can't field phalangites. That is where your real strength lies with phalangite units, guys. Is enemies that can't field them. The one thing you've got to be wary of all the time, though, is... Remember that AI does everything it can to avoid fighting your phalangites face-on. So you've really got to force its hand to try and get them to do that. Maybe charging these guys forward and then stopping them, putting them into phalanx so that they have to engage your face on, that sort of thing. Uh, because the AI really hates to come at these guys face on. But yeah, solid, solid unit. Going to do well all through the game. Now let's have a look at our elite phalangite unit. 39 defense, 19 morale, 19 melee attack. And 13 alt attack, which is actually obscene, really, for a phalangite unit. And let's have a look. Have we got plumage? Oh, we've got plumage. But we've got a lot of feathers as well. Feathers and plumage all throughout. And everyone's wearing a glorious, glorious cape. So, yeah, a fantastic unit. And look at the Aspis shields that they are wielding. Very cool, indeed. Some of these guys look very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Fantastic. Really good. And as uh, Phalangite units goes, an elite one this is definitely. I don't know why I turned into Yoda then, but an elite one this is. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. But 39 defense, 19 morale, 19 melee attack. Very nice indeed. Not quite as good as some of the elite Agama we've seen, but still very, very, very good. One thing you've got to be careful with these guys, though. They only have 13 defense against missiles, guys. So, you know, extended periods of javelin fire or missile fire on these guys will whittle them down more than some of your other units. So maybe avoid missile fire with these guys as much as possible. Because that defense skill, 26, is brilliant. It's really good. And, you know, phalangite units, 19 melee attack and 19 morale. It's going to be in the fight for such a long time that avoiding missile fire is going to be imperative with these guys to really maximize the use of their really elite stats that they have. A fantastic unit. I love the look of those guys, and they are going to be a very good unit all through the game, guys. Now, let's move on to our pre-reform cavalry. Cavalry. With the General's Bodyguard, seen these guys many times before, and with the Achaean League, um, we got the blues going through these guys. Very nice on the helms. Indeed, we've talked about these stats. 47 charge, 18 morale, 14 melee attack, 34 defense, 15 armor. So going to do well uh, against missiles, all that sort of thing. And 19 defense skill. Like we've talked about many times, they're, they're such in such low number, guys, that you know, using the charge as much as possible is really an imperative with the General's Bodyguards. With all the General's Bodyguards, honestly, apart from the Spartan ones that are spearmen. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's really imperative because you've got such small numbers of these boys. So use them as much as possible. Uh, charge them as much as possible rather than doing anything else. So on to the uh, Prodromoi. We've also seen these guys many times before. The uh, boyos on the back of the horses with the jabbies, like we've talked about. Uh, nine morale. 12 defense, uh, you know, 10 melee attack, 9 missile attack. And like we've said before, 27 charge is never, you know, it's not bad. It's not terrible. So these guys, once they've fired the javis, can still do a little bit of damage on the charge. But like we've seen in many of the battles we've had on these videos, you know, the best thing to do is to charge the enemy from behind or just be using these to run down enemy routing troops or charge you know missile troops that's really what they're good for uh, and firing the javi to harass the enemy uh, like we've seen many times and then we have the achaean zistaphoroi here we are looking very cool indeed i always love the look of the zistaphoroi every time we have a look at them just how long those lances are they are so long they are going to be puncturing through the enemy very nice indeed 13 morale, 11 melee attack, 11 alt attack, 21 defense, and 31 charge. So pretty similar to most Zistaphora units, uh, and they're always going to do well. You know, cavalry in Rome Total War, in well, in every Total War, really, is the OGs. They are the best units by far. You could win this game so easily if you just had full cavalry armies. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, if you want to see that, check out my Parthia campaign in vanilla, where we pretty much didn't use a single unit of infantry all game apart from to man rams um you know cavalry is just obscenely strong so 21 defense decent nine armor 12 defense skill 31 charge like we've seen with that nine armor they will be very easily killed by javis so just watch out for the javis they're still going to be able to you know hold off archers and slinger fire but javis are going to shred these guys so get them away from javis if you see the enemy tr like you know, getting ready to fire their javis, get them out of there. Uh, but they're going to do really well on the charge. That 31 charge is really good with uh, that good 11 uh, melee attack. So let's have a look at some of the reform cavalry that we have. We have the Aspidophoroi and we have the Achaean Zistaphoroi reformed. So the Aspidophoroi, in fact, your only cavalry unit that has Aspis shields. And that is why it's called the Aspidophoroi, of course. Uh, very nice indeed. Some really nice shields here. Always beautiful shields in this mod, including the... I mean, the units are always beautiful anyway. But yeah, very, very cool. But these Aspido 4, right? 27 defense, 15 morale, 12 melee attack, and a charge of 36 with 14 defense against missiles here. Only 13 defense score. If we compare them to the Zista 4, right? you can pretty much see they're better in nearly every department. So, just a better version of the Zista 4 right? and got good defense against missiles, these guys. So, these guys, you can be less scared are going to get killed by Javis. They still will do, of course, but try and try still to avoid them getting into Javi fire always. Uh, but they're going to be a bit more resilient to missile fire. And they're going to do more damage on the charge and stay in the fight longer with that 50 morale. So, a really decent unit, going to serve you well all through the game. And then let's move on to the Zistaphoroi Reformed, which has 16 morale, 13 melee attack, and a total defense of 24 with a charge of 38. And we can see these guys looking very cool indeed. These guys don't have shields, like we've said. They only have 9 armor, but let's compare them to the... So they have, yeah, 3 more defense because they have 3 more defense skill. And they've just got 3 more morale, 2 more attack in both alt and... Uh, normal melee attack but how do they compare to the aspido foroi let's have a look the aspido foroi so they're slightly worse defense wise because they don't have that shield but they're actually slightly better on the charge and with the attack so these guys are your hit and run and these guys are your cavalry killers is basically the way i'm seeing this you know these guys they have less armor they have less defense but they've got a better charge and a better attack so these guys are going to be better on the charge charging the enemy these guys are going to be dispatching cavalry really quickly because they've just got better defense than most cavalry units in the game apart from, you know, cataphracts. <laughs> so, yeah, apart from cataphracts, they're, they're going to do really well against Greek cavalry and all that sort of thing. All the different types of Greek cavalry. So your cavalry killers are these... Cavalry? Cavalry. The cavalry killer. The cavalry killers. And these guys are your infantry destroyers. So, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you were... Uh, 
comment down below your favorite unit. That would be fantastic. And we're going to uh, march forward and enjoy this little bataille that we have going against Rhodes. Now, one thing to note, guys, Rhodes has a little bit of a smaller roster than, than this one. So we've had to, uh, you know, uh, add in a lot of one of the units that they're most famous for. So they do have a lot of repeated units in there. Um, just to make it even, because otherwise it, it would be a walkover, obviously. Uh, we're always playing on hard, guys, if you remember. We're always on hard. Always ready to go. But yeah, if you, uh, if you want to leave the, uh, leave the uh, video here, that's absolutely fine, guys. Just leave a like down below. That would be fantastic. And if you haven't liked already, that would be brilliant. Uh, and comment down below your favorite looking unit. I mean, they all look fantastic, don't they? Uh, but comment down below your favorite looking unit. Uh, and that would be awesome. So let's get our archers into place. You can see this is the little sneak preview of what we're going to be facing soon. What we're going to be having a look at very soon. The Rhodian Epibates are, you know, the real uh, standout unit in this roster here. And you can see I've, I've added a load of them because that is what they're famous for. But here come the cavalry. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to be careful. I'm going to get my Prodromoy forward. What is that? That's Prodromoy as well. We'll go Prodromoy versus Prodromoy. You're on fire at will, boys. Very good, very good. We've got to be careful here now. We are firing at the enemy. Oh, that's my Prodromoy. There we are. Oh, I thought they were going for the charge then. We've got Aspido Foroy as well. We're going to sandwich them in here. So let's get that. We've got our good cavalry over here. And they don't actually have any cavalry on this flank. So let's come forward. And yep, let's uh, get our archers and everything back. Get you all off that so you don't go mental. And let's go. Let us go. Nice. Let's try and uh, scrunch these guys in. And see whether we can actually flank with our phalangites here. That would be really, really good. You can see the AI's bunched its, all its units into one little box. It's not a good idea, AI. Allows us to do something like this. We've got to be wary of those Epibates, though, still. Just because... Oh, I should have run you guys. But oh well. Get over there. Get away from these guys. There we are. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Yeah, you can see the Epibates are throwing their javis quite nicely. Let's get those Aspido four right. Then we can get all that, you know, all these guys. Come on, boys. Let's go. Get forward. Get into the Epibates again. Those Epibates, not Epibates. I keep saying Epibates. I don't know why. Let's have a look. Yeah, we need to try and get through this little gap here. Who's shredding? My Theropora is getting shredded by this Epibates. Wow. I wonder whether they're like armor piercing or something. Oh, we will see. We will see next. Uh, oh, wow. How are these uh, missile troops holding on, holding on to that? I don't know. Which ones are they? Maybe I've just gone into some Peltas or something. They actually, they actually held that charge quite well. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well done, boys. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I think we're going to shred here, though. We're going to shred this army, aren't we? Let's come through. Let's get into the side of these guys. Some more Epibates. Okay, there we are. These guys should all be wavering and routing very soon. Yep, there we are. Nice. Let's get them. Come on, boys. You phalangites are just slopping along. Let's watch our Peltaforoi charge get into the enemy. Very nice. There we are. Get stabby stabbing, boys. Get stabby stabbing. Well, let's halt. We can stay there now. You can see this Epibate is here. Oh, we're getting... You know, they're firing into us, which is not nice. Don't like that. Now they've decided to charge, so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's going on there. Both of us charged each other. Who's this? Let's see if we can charge that Hoplite. Oh, no, not you. God damn. Come forward. Yeah, we've got them. We've got them. Oh, wait. No, that was, is that my unit? No. These are my units. I think you should go into there. 
And you should go into there. No, you're charging the wrong way, bro. This way. They won't listen. Do they charge without orders? No, it doesn't say they do. I don't know. Okay, well, I guess you have to charge there. It's fine. What are you doing, boys? Charge. <laughs> That's the worst charge I've ever seen. They're just running up to the back of them. Come on, boys. <laughs> what is that? That's not a charge. That's a meander. They should break now, though, because the enemy, their friends are breaking. Yeah, there we are. It's what we like to see. Where are they running? What are they running away from? I don't get it. Boys, come on. Let's get into the back of their Epibates here because they've shredded our late uh, Theroperoi. And you can see, like we said before, this Theroperoi is just a standard Theroperoi. So it's not going to do too well later on in the game. Yeah, destroyed them with that charge. What are they doing? Why are these guys doing this? Yeah, we should have broken both of them now. What, what are they? Where are they chasing? There's no one over here. I don't understand. Where are you going? Well, kill them all for being annoying. There we are. He's dead. Good. Uh, who's left then? No one. We've absolutely shredded them. Poor roads. Poor roads. All roads leads to death. Oh, there we are. Fantastic. Good, 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 good. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do leave a like uh, down below. And like I said, a subscribe would be fantastic as well. Let me know your favorite unit in the comments down below. What the your favorite looking unit. That is really cool indeed. And thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. And I will see you all again on the next video.